pregnancy is not a sickness, so get to work. I'm sorry, but my stomach is bloated. Can I do it later? You are stable now, right? Start cleaning, you slug. Mom? Oh, Henry. Mariton wants to clean up so badly. I was just telling her to take care of herself. The video played had a clear sound. It captured the exact moment of the wife bullying I suffered from, and also the moment she acted as a good mother-in-law to her son. I told you grandma is a liar. We were surrounded by the confused voices of relatives and friends of my husband and I. My name is Madison Smith. I'm a 34-year-old housewife. My family consists of my husband Henry, who is one year older than me, and my 80-year-old daughter Caitlin. Also, I'm currently eight months pregnant. The doctor says it's probably a boy. Our two children are rather far apart in age. This was because I remember having a hard time with my first baby. Though I had been avoiding it. My husband and his side of the family was eager to have another baby. Thankfully, their desire became a reality, and so I have a baby in my belly now. I have forgotten all the trouble of the first pregnancy, because of the happiness of expecting our second child or not. What is troubling me is my husband's mother, my mother-in-law. I can't go home very often to my parents because I'd have to fly there. Therefore, when I had my first baby, we relied on Henry's parents. But my mother-in-law gave me a bunch of housework to do to have Caitlin to herself. A newborn baby should naturally stay with his or her mother all the time. After giving birth, the mother breastfeeds her child while waiting for her own body to recover. I think many mothers concentrate on just eating and sleeping. When not breastfeeding to allow their bodies to recover, I thought that I could rely on my mother-in-law for a month or so while I do that. But in reality, my mother-in-law would say, "You are my son's wife, so you should be the one working your fingers to the bone." Mommy is busy now, so come here to Grandma. She took my newborn daughter away from me and ordered me to do the housework. Six days after giving birth, the day after I was discharged from the hospital, I was ordered to cook and clean the house. Instead of sleeping to recover, I was told to get up and work. Pregnancy and giving birth is not a sickness. I've gone through it without a problem. I heard these words over and over again. When my daughter woke up and started to cry. I would have to undress and feed her with my father-in-law present. When I was done nursing, she would throw me away as if I had no more use for her. I was lucky that my father-in-law had the understanding to look away. I finished cleaning up here and there, then the toilet, then the shower. In the middle of cleaning the shower, I fainted and collapsed, and was readmitted to the hospital. My father-in-law said the bathroom was red with my blood. It was my father-in-law who called the ambulance. For my husband's sake, I should mention that he was out for work. He was working frantically so that he could take his time off from the next day. The day after I was discharged from the hospital after giving birth, he had to go back again. The doctors gave me a scolding. I was overworked. I was anemic and dehydrated. Mommy is so unreliable. Collapsing like that, isn't she? I remember the look on my mother-in-law's face as she held my crying daughter in her arms, refusing to let go. My husband was also angry. Mom, you're too much. Have you really had a baby before? I thought she was fine because I had gone through it before. Madison, you are so weak. My father-in-law and my husband were appalled at my mother-in-law's lack of apology. Anyway, my husband told me that it was understandable for me to try to avoid another child, 
because I had been through such an experience so soon after the birth. However, time has passed since that first birth. My daughter, who was a newborn then, is now 80 years old and has just entered third grade. She was a precious child, already speaking at quite a young age, perhaps because she was a girl. My husband and daughter told me one day, You can ignore my parents. We'll do our best at home. I will take care of the baby too and help you. This time, I will take a formal paternity leave and you can just work on your recovery. I had no choice but to do my best when I was told such a reliable and happy thing. So I kept the pregnancy a secret from my in-laws until I entered the second trimester. I only vaguely told them what month the baby was due. We could just let our parents know a while after the birth. But we should make sure to report your parents more often, since they are farther away. The distance between our house and my in-law's house is about an hour by car. One saving grace was that my mother-in-law didn't have a driver's license. Still, there was some unannounced visit. With the help of my husband, I was able to escape from my mother-in-law and safely grow the child in my body. Eventually, the due date approached. Two nights before my due date, I started having contractions. I called the hospital and asked for instructions. They told me to come to the hospital to be admitted, as the delivery may be accelerated for a woman who has given birth before. Looks like it started. Can I get a ride to the hospital? Finally! Caitlin, let's drive mom to the hospital together. They dropped me off and I was admitted to the hospital for to deliver our second baby. As is hospital policy nowadays, there was a rule that did not allow visitors until the time of discharge. I think it's a measure to protect expectant mothers and the babies. Now, I won't be able to see my family until I've safely delivered my baby. This made me feel stronger about my goal to safely deliver the baby and return home. I spent a lot of time on video calls with my husband until the contractions got worse. My daughter looked like an angel sleeping on my phone, and I couldn't help but take a picture of her. Later that night, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy. In general, first-time mothers are allowed to leave the hospital about five days after delivery and those experienced are allowed about four days after delivery. I had not given birth in eight years and felt as if it was my first time, but I was allowed to leave the hospital after four days. I heard that the contraction of the uterus are stronger than after first birth, and I think it was more painful than in the past. Even so, the newborn baby was undeniably cute. When I left the hospital, I asked my husband, who was now on paternity leave, to pick me up. It was still before noon, so my daughter was at school. I can finally show you and Caitlin our new baby. We have to celebrate when Caitlin gets home from school. I will get everything ready. I never thought that this would be the last conversation I would have with my husband. It's been about two hours since the call. My husband had not yet arrived to pick me up. I was waiting at the hospital with my newborn son in my arms. I stared at my phone, wondering what was wrong, since I hadn't heard from him. Then, I received a call. It was from Heather, my husband's sister. I'm sorry to call you at such a busy time. Could you stay calm and listen? Henry was in a car accident and has just been rushed to the hospital. I don't remember how I got to the hospital after that. I think I took a cab with my son in my arms. When I arrived at the hospital, my sister-in-law was waiting for me at the entrance. She took me to a place that was neither a hospital room nor a treatment room, but what seems to be a mortuary. No way! It was like I was having a nightmare. 
Someone was lying there, covered with a white cloth. No way! This can't be my husband. How can you be so late, even though you are his wife? My mother-in-law's shrill voice snapped me back to reality. It's your fault, Madison. It's all your fault. I couldn't understand what was going on from my mother-in-law's emotional yelling, but my sister-in-law explained it to me. My husband had been in a car accident on his way to pick me up. He was driving his car when he collided head-on with a truck that had swerved into oncoming traffic. The truck driver may have fallen asleep at the wheel. Regular passenger car versus a large truck. There was no way he could win, and my husband passed on the spot. My sister-in-law, who had just lost her brother. Told me while holding back her tears, one of the police officers knew my sister-in-law, and so she was contacted before I was. At a time like this, it must feel terrible. With your baby just born, please try to stay strong. My husband, Henry, was taken from us without him ever seeing his son. Our son doesn't even have a name yet. We were still deciding together. How am I going to explain this to Caitlin? My son in my arms started crying. I think he was hungry. Shut up! Make him stop crying! My mother-in-law shouted again. It's a terrible and absurd thing to tell a newborn baby to stop crying. If you had a baby, you should have let us know. Such a wife with bad timing. Nothing can be helped with those words. I couldn't take my husband home right away, because he had died in an accident and needed to be autopsied. I waited two days, and his body was taken directly to the funeral home. I was a chief mourner. My father-in-law accompanied me and helped with the funeral arrangements. My sister-in-law, who already had three children, helped take care of my son while I did that. My mother-in-law. Kept repeating like an incantation, that my husband died because of me. Mom, don't say things like that to Madison when she's in the worst pain. I'm the one who lost my precious child that I gave birth to while in pain. My mother-in-law made a fuss about how she should be the chief mourner, and how everything was my fault. She used to take away my newborn daughter, but now. She doesn't seem to care about her grandson. I was so tired and sleepy at the wake, but I couldn't sleep now. I had to be a good mourner, so that my husband wouldn't be worried when he'd leave us. I kept that in mind and stayed careful. I was the only person who could protect my children. I thought I was doing well while doing all that, and breastfeeding my baby every couple of hours. But in the middle of greeting the people who attended the funeral, I collapsed. I thought I heard someone's words, but I couldn't do anything. When I came to, I saw my mother-in-law's face turning red in front of me. I must have been unconscious for several minutes. In a corner of the funeral home, I heard an ambulance approaching. Caitlin, alongside my parents, who had flown in, were by my side. Daddy told me to protect mommy from grandma. Here's a proof. My daughter was holding my husband's phone in her hands. I do remember handing her his phone, miraculously intact, but with a practiced hand, she unlocked it and played a video. Pregnancy is not a sickness, so get to work. I'm sorry, but my stomach is bloated. Can I do it later? You are stable now, right? Start cleaning, you slug. Mom. Oh, Henry, Madison wants to clean up so badly. I was just telling her to take care of herself. The video played had a clear sound. It captures the exact moment of the wife bullying I suffered from, and also the moment she acted as a good mother-in-law to her son. I told you, Grandma is a liar. We were surrounded by the confused voices of relatives and friends of my husband and I. 
Oh, I remember now. It was a video of when we visited my in-laws one time before our son's birth. My husband was looking out for me, but my mother-in-law would take advantage of every chance she got to bully me. Hey, Caitlin, give me that phone. No way. I know you're going to try to erase this. As my mother-in-law tried to take the phone away from Caitlin, my parents interrupted. Mrs. Smith, what is this all about? Oh, Mr. Miller, it's just Caitlin messing around. It's a misunderstanding. Miller is my maiden name. I'd like to talk to you over there. My red-faced mother-in-law was taken away by my parents. They seemed to be heading to the rented car parked outside. Caitlin, what did you tell everyone? I told everyone what Daddy told me. He said that Grandma is a liar and a jerk to you, that I need to protect you when Daddy is away. Daddy, where are you? My daughter started crying because she remembered that her father was gone. I cried with her too. This was the first time I cried with all my might without worrying. Later, I was told the words someone had said to me when I collapsed. After the funeral, I was taken to the ambulance and put on an IV. What gives you the right to sleep at your husband's funeral, Lizzie wife? Apparently, my mother-in-law said that when I collapsed. Quite a strong line, isn't it? My daughter may not have understood what she was saying, but she was surely angry. Mommy didn't do anything wrong, but Grandma is mad at her. I'm going to protect her from my grandma, just like Daddy said. Like that, I believe that my daughter's sense of responsibility as the eldest child now was triggered. My sister-in-law, who was watching the whole thing, told me, Really? I'm sorry about my mother. It's okay. I was able to feel Henry and Caitlin's love. Can't you see that she's making her daughter hear all of this? It was my sister-in-law who looked out for my son while all of this happened. She's taking care of my son next to me, right by the ivy pole. Lousy wife. How can she say something like that? A wife is not a slave. Why does she think a mother-in-law is so important? That line and the fact that their granddaughter revealed my mother-in-law's true identity made my parents furious. Because of her anachronistic beliefs and her actions of putting the health of a mother and a child at risk, they questioned my mother-in-law thoroughly. Of course, my mother-in-law evaded the questioning, saying that it was a misunderstanding or that she was just trying to be nice. Then, my father-in-law said something very bluntly. How can you face Henry when you've been harassing Madison like that? Even my mother-in-law fell quiet. He continued. I can't deal with you anymore. My mother-in-law couldn't say anything back. After all that talk, I returned to the funeral home and boarded the bus. I cremated my husband about two hours later than scheduled. After a month, at my husband's memorial mass, I was generally feeling better. My son, whom I named Hunter, taking my husband's first letter, is also doing well. My mother stayed over to help me until the memorial mass was safely over. She cooked meals for me and my daughter and took care of the house for me. I experienced for the first time what it means to be taken care of as a postpartum mother. There were many things that happened. First, my sister-in-law declared to her own mother that she no longer wanted connection with her. In addition, my father-in-law and mother-in-law divorced, a middle-aged divorce. Of course, my mother-in-law said she didn't want either one of them. My sister-in-law spit out that she didn't want a mother who could be a bad influence on her and her family. My father-in-law said that their values are too different and that he no longer has anything but hatred for her. My mother-in-law never had a mother-in-law herself. 
My father-in-law's mother died before they were married, so she only had a father-in-law. Pregnancy and giving birth is not a sickness. I don't think she has a right to say this phrase repeatedly to me. My mother-in-law's reason for her actions was not because she wanted to pass on the mistreatment she had received from her mother-in-law. My sister-in-law was furious at my mother-in-law's actions that came from her malice. My father-in-law and mother-in-law divorced shortly before the memorial mass, and my mother-in-law was forced to leave the house. Her aging parents were in an institution, and she had no one to turn to, so she went to her daughter's house. Don't be silly! I don't see you as my mother anymore! And so, she was turned away. Next, she called my house, and my mother answered the phone. Oh, Mrs. Smith, I've heard you've been through so much. But thanks to you, my daughter had a much harder time. I heard the other day that right after Caitlin was born, you made my daughter work to bleed. No, Madison didn't say anything. All she said was that she fell by accident. Your husband? Oh, he isn't your husband anymore, is he? Your ex-husband told me about that time because he was the one who called the ambulance. And even this time, it happened right after the baby was born. And the funeral was right after she was discharged from the hospital. It must have been hard for her. But to tell her not to sleep when she collapsed, or to be a lousy wife, it's just too much. Who the hell do you think you are? Oh, did I already make this complaint the other day? So yes, neither my daughter nor the Millards here will provide any assistance. My daughter is too busy with her own life, and we do not wish to be associated with you any longer. That's right, never. That's why we are asking you to stop contacting us. Caitlin? Caitlin doesn't want to see you anymore either. If you come near her, I will report you to the police. Thank you for your understanding. Goodbye. While I was breastfeeding Hunter, the relationship with my mother-in-law was broken off over the phone. My mother-in-law is only 58 years old, not old enough to receive a pension. She has received a share of the property, but she will have a hard time living from now on. She just shamed all the relatives at the funeral by acting like a terrible mother-in-law. She may not even have a galanter to rent a house. She's my husband's mother, so I sometimes almost inadvertently show her mercy. But my father told me that I have to get rid of her in order to protect myself and my children. I was a little nervous going into the memorial mass. If my mother-in-law showed up, I was ready to firmly reject her. But my mother-in-law didn't show up. I can't believe she's a woman who can't even show up at her son's memorial. What a woman. All I can say is that it was a good decision to leave her. My mother-in-law hasn't even visited her siblings. None of her relatives know where she is. The only thing they could tell us was that my husband's cousin saw her under a bridge. I'm sorry to hear about her downfall, but I can honestly say it's a relief. Oh yes, my father-in-law graciously apologized to me. I'm sorry I didn't stop her from doing that, even though I was aware of it. I wonder if I can continue to be a grandfather to my grandchildren. Of course. After all, I'm Harry's wife. I'm sorry, and thank you. I consider my father-in-law a man of goodwill, from when he looked away from me breastfeeding. If she shows up, I will deal with her. That's what he said, and I'm grateful to him for that. The memorial mass is about to begin. I wonder if my husband in heaven is watching over us. You will have to wait another 40 or 50 years before I can see you again, Henry. I want to see my happy children for you. I will do my best, so just wait for me, okay? Thank you for watching to the end. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. 
See you in the next video.